Hey, what's going on everybody? So I am carving a bulldog, but we're gonna talk about carving dogs in general. So this is kind of a how to carve a dog, but a bulldog for beginners. So step one, I'm gonna rip a little slab off of here and then I'm gonna project on the image. Now, everybody asked me about projecting images. I personally just bought one off Amazon, it's Bluetooth, I connect it and I just throw the picture up on it with a, with a profile view. So this is the dog, kind of like my old dog Stella and I'm just gonna get the general outline and then we're going to block. So right away we're blocking to form, then once we have form we're going to shape, then once we have shape we're going to detail, then we're gonna make it beautiful and then we're going to be done. So this isn't a crazy detailed thing, this is mostly just for chainsaw. So let's get after it. Here we go, cue the music, step one, two, and three, and then I will come back to you for the next four, five, and six. Yoo! Let's go, welcome aboard. Bow. There it is, everybody. That's the one. <laughs> Nothing special, just that. So that's the block out phase for just punching it out. Right now, follow true to the lines. I gotta get in here, I gotta do that. But now I'm gonna focus on this. Now, I'm thinking that this dog's head's gonna be here looking this way, so I need to make the body kind of going like this. And then right now you're just thinking about bones. And bones and muscles, we all have the same ones, dogs, humans, whales, you name it, everything. Every animal has hips and sh tails and phalanges and you name it. We all have the same skeletal system. Now, doing that, you gotta think about w how you're gonna place them. You know, like the legs kicked out here, so the hips are here. So I know I'm gonna lose this right away. I'm gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna kinda just like taper it and imagine blocking out the animal. And keep in mind, you know, ears and face. We'll get to the face. They have a very flat face. So right now I'm just gonna stay true to block form. Okay, so block form, block it out, cut out everything you don't need, and then we'll get to the next stage after. Cue back the music. Yoo-hoo! Okay, so I moved along quite a bit there. Now, when you're carving, like if you're carving for your first time or if you're not super comfortable with it, you wanna to try to stay blocky, but at the same time, as soon as you get those major block out, punch out, carves, cuts done, then you can start to shape. Now, I am looking at the planes. I'm looking at the different shapes, the planes, what the shadows are in the picture, and then how I can incorporate that into the dog. Now I'm not going detail yet. I'm just trying to pull out like 
the the legs and separate them and then just crunch the body and then once I get further along I'm going to start to detail it. Now that's something that you all should think about when you're carving. Just try to have fun. I mean a long nosed dog is easier if, if you're blocking it because it's it's a thin snout. You know with, with a bulldog they have that short crunchy face so you're doing a short face and then we're gonna be doing rolls and stuff in detail at the end. I'm not going crazy with this one for detail, but I'm just doing a quick version of a, uh, a bulldog. If you wanna see like a really good version of a bulldog, Google Ryan Villiers. That bulldog he just did was pretty crazy, but that's also days and days of work and we're rocking, you know, an hour and 25 minutes into this thus far, if not. Okay, let's keep going. So moving along right now and I'm starting to think about punching through the negative space. Now when you're doing that, just start wide and taper your way in. But one great tip that took me many times of screwing things up is don't com commit to cutting this away. Now what I mean by that is like going, okay, the foot's out here. I'm just going to cut this line right here. And because if you take this away, you can't ever push it back and it's done. Like that's your commitment. And I think if you just take your time and let that go until you really have this part, the outside part done before you cut it off, that's going to make it really nice because it gives you the freedom to taper it in because the body could be big. The leg could be one side big. You're, when you're in the middle of carving and you're just like, ah, you're in your head and you're going crazy. It's a, it's, you don't take time to step back and look like for myself right now, I just looked and I got this big overcut right here. So right now I know I got to make that disappear. Now I just saw it. That's cause I just step back and I take time and a good trick, another one. So two good tricks in this little thing. What are we on? Step 10? I don't even know. I, I suck at doing these step videos, but this is three dimensional, right? And we're, we're trying to create negative space, which is the sculpture and underneath and kind of like focusing on the positive space. Now the positive space is the sculpture itself. Talk too much. Let's go pitter patter. And the cool thing about bulldogs, I actually know because I had one, Stella, miss you girl. Um, I had one for 14 years and all their lines connect in really cool ways. Like I don't have, I'm just gonna use the image that they wanted to use, but my dog had like really cool smile lines that connected under her chin and like all her wrinkles just kind of fit. So you gotta look for those when you're doing a roly poly type dog. Now, in this video, we're talking about all dogs, except for we're doing a short face, like, you know, Frenchie, Bulldog, uh, Schnau like all short face, bumpy dogs, you know, like they're crunched together. So we're moving into the face now. And I'm just gonna start with the nose. 
and then I'm gonna work the mouth out and I'm gonna pull it back because that all connects, that big jowl, that's gonna sell it with this one. And then, you know, have fun with it. Okay, so we're into the point where I'm happy with it. The body's cool, and the great thing about it when it's like doesn't look totally, you know, perfect, just jam your saw in and then twist it a little bit. Like give it a little twist and pull, and then you're gonna create rolls. And once you create the rolls, I mean, it's just a big fat ball dog anyways. Can you even say fat nowadays? Like, or is that like dog shaming? Is that a thing? I don't even know. I don't really care. <laughs> this is a finger sander, uh, 36 grit. I love it. You, if you don't have it, you can use like a Dremel and uh, an angle grinder and a palm sander. Like you just want to get a Dremel with a bit like this and or a flame bit or a cuts all. Or, but ideally, saber tooth are the best. But if you can't find them locally at your shops, go and just get whatever you can get that's a burr. And then angle grinder disc, 36 grit, four inch on the small uh, Makita grinder. I, uh, I double them up, as you can tell here. I double them up just for safety. They suck when they break. But uh, yeah, so let's, let's, uh, let's, let's keep, keep her growing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> So you can see that I just redid the whole face. I dropped down the forehead. That's why I don't push in so much. It's okay to leave stuff, but when you're looking at the picture and you're trying to see something, I noticed that the eyes were way higher and, and the wood's really wet, so I'm actually gonna call it a day and tomorrow I will uh, let this surface dry and then it'll be better to carve. But, you know, you just had to, it, 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 luckily it was high enough up here that I could drop it down and then just taper the forehead more and then, and then really I'll be able to capture that eye better. So, and then with the chainsaw, I'm just kind of running it and fluffing with the, with the top of my tip. And that really makes a big difference just by dragging it. And then you can drag it this way. You can do it whatever way. The more you get to know the tip of your bar, it's like a pencil and for furring and different kind of textures, it's really, really great. So, and then you can flap sand it out. Other than that, you see you tomorrow. Okay, it's a new day. I got my Hawaiian shirt on. You! Um, I'm gonna buff this out with the grinder. And so, detail time. Get it done. Let's go.
Okay, now I'm ready to go. I'm gonna do some painting. I'm actually gonna use the brown of the wood and the white, and then I'm just gonna use the white and see how if it, see if it works. It's oh, I can see myself in the GoPro. I look like that dude from uh, oh, Rafuka or something like that. The 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 party LA dudes. I'll clear cue the music. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. I used to party with those dudes in LA actually. Um, he's a nice dude. Okay, so now we're on to detailing this dog. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna carve the eyes, I'm actually gonna do black with a little hint of brown. I'm gonna take a brown, I'm gonna just do like the outline of it, and then pop out a highlight with just a dab of white. Let's just kind of wrap it up. When you're carving these dogs, you just wanna think about, you know, getting the shape, you know, understanding where the backbone is, the hip bones, and then trying to create movement, that's gonna elevate your piece. If he's just sitting and looking straight, it's, it's okay, it's a great way to start, but just try to get that profile. And when I mean profile, I mean profile view, right? Like uh, arms wide out, body straight. When you start to increase dynamic movement into stuff or like a head turn, you gotta start thinking about muscles and your neck and your tendons. It's stuff you can get to, but if you're just starting out, keep it simple. The kiss theory, it's the best way to do it. Keep it simple, silly. So let's, uh, let's get after it. And then I'm gonna cut this base and make it small because it's gotta ship to Toronto to a soon to be new friend of mine, you. Okay, so, you know, the paint's a little strong, so I'm gonna let it dry and sit, and I might flap or sand it, but right now, pretty much calling it done, you know? He's a cool little bit doggy, little cool doggy, and it's just simple, you know? I mean, you wanna get the movement of the body, the backside doesn't matter as much, but it's cool dog, man. Makes me think of my little girl, Stella, I miss her. Little too white, but that's all right. Once we stain it and flapper sand it, it'll soften the white and bring back a little color. Oh so yeah, hope you guys like this video. My name's Ryan. Give this video a like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. And if you, this is for the members, you guys are the best. I love it. Leave your questions and comments and I'll, I'll get to them.